Elon Musk just unveiled the latest Optimus robot at Tesla's AI Day 2022 event. This time, there's no more costume or person in a robot suit dancing, but it's the real deal with the first version of Tesla's humanoid robot walking onto the stage on its own. Let's dive in to see how Tesla is advancing its humanoid robotics by leveraging other parts of their business, how far they've come from last year, and also have a look at some of the other players in the space to see how Tesla stacks up. And before I continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Last year, Elon Musk teased the Tesla bot concept at AI Day, outlining his vision for the future, and subsequently prioritizing the robot onto Tesla's roadmap and pushing the team to make tremendous progress. As Elon Musk says, prototypes are easy, but production is hard. And it was clear that Tesla was just in the prototyping phase, as they didn't have any sort of functioning robot last year. While Elon Musk joked around by bringing out someone in a dancing robot costume, he made it clear that this was a critical project for the company and for humanity, even though the mainstream media didn't understand the gravity of what was going on. The first AI day was a success because its purpose was to recruit talented AI and robotics engineers. Within a week of the event, Tesla received 100 times more replicants, I mean applicants, than usual. Just to emphasize, this was big because they basically brought forward two years worth of job applications into a single week. So they bolstered their team and then Tesla got to work right away. AI Day was in August 2021, and so by February of this year, just six months later, Tesla already had their prototype, what they call Bumble C, ready, and that was the robot we saw walking onto the stage. There are multiple areas of expertise required in building a robot, and Tesla already has hardware and software from its other projects readily available to help piece together their humanoid robot. The Bumble C prototype is built with a combination of off-the-shelf components as well as using mechanisms that Tesla already designs. For instance, the full self-driving computer that Tesla puts into every one of its electric cars was also used to power the brains of this robot. And Tesla uses similar processes to collect data and to train the robot's neural nets as it does with its autopilot software. They actually have this robot working, or rather learning, at a real station at Tesla's Fremont factory where cars such as the Model S, 3, X, and Y are produced. Elon Musk outlined that the preliminary goal for the Tesla bot is to truly do useful things, and starting it off in the factory will be perfect for making Tesla even more efficient. There are many tasks at the Gigafactory that humans simply do better than robots. But a humanoid robot with hands that mimic that of a human will unquestionably be able to increase the level of automation at the factory beyond what any other company is capable of. While Elon Musk was asked about Teslabot expanding the company's mission away from accelerating the advent of sustainable energy, it's apparent that Teslabot does expand the company's mission, but at the same time, the robot's first set of tasks are very much in line with sustainable energy as helping to produce sustainable products will boost Tesla's speed and reduce costs thanks to pushing automation to the limit. Now Tesla has in fact been working on multiple robots in parallel. The second robot they have is dubbed Optimus Production Unit 1, which wasn't ready to walk yet during the demo, but likely will be in a few weeks according to the Tesla team. This is demonstrating some insane speed on Tesla's part with the rate at which they can develop new hardware but also use their software expertise to bring new functionality as quickly as possible. One of the directives that Elon Musk has given the team is to make Tesla bot useful as quickly as they can. It's an expensive project to run, and so usefulness is important to make it worthwhile. Replacing a tedious job removes one's salary from the payroll and replaces it with a one-time payment plus the cost of electricity. At their Fremont station, they have the Tesla bot prototype already lifting things and moving objects around. 
They think they will have some of this functionality nailed down to perfection in just a few months. Another thing is that Elon Musk always says he wants the production version to always be better than the prototype. And this doesn't seem like the case here, with the concept version of the Tesla bot shown last year being more human-like and refined looking than even Optimus Production Unit 1. However, Optimus is the code name for the product, whereas Tesla Bot may likely be the name consumers will see. Yet even this so-called production version still has the name Optimus and will therefore still be used internally by Tesla. Later in the AI Day presentation, Elon Musk says a consumer version may be available in three to five years. So Tesla is probably working hard to continue iterating and improving these current internal production units so that the robot is leaner and more efficiently designed and looking closer to the concept when it's finally ready for customer deliveries. A small Easter egg, if you didn't notice, is that Tesla is using puns based on transformer names Optimus Subprime and Bumble C for its robot code names, which is quite fitting. It will be exciting when Tesla comes out with a Megatron version. Now the Optimus production unit differs from the Bumble C unit in that Tesla has designed and built their own custom parts and this is Tesla's specialty. They use designs that are efficient and made for scaling. So this includes actuators, the battery pack, the control system, the entire robot is fully created by Tesla. They're planning to reduce the power consumption and part count wherever possible to boost efficiency and to reduce cost. They've already shown a more concrete example of doing this with the actuators at each joint. There are 28 joints in the robot and they can build each of these joints using just six unique parts or types of actuators, making it easier to manufacture. They also take another page out of their vehicle knowledge by bringing most of the mass towards the center of the vehicle. With electric vehicles, especially with Tesla's structural battery pack, the weight is pulled even closer to the center of the vehicle, allowing for better handling. With the same physics, by having most of the sensing and wiring electronics near the center, the robot will be more nimble and more efficient to move. The robot's compute power, or brain, is actually at its core, not in its head. And although Tesla didn't seem to mention it this year, there will be multiple cameras in the head, perhaps even enabling a 360 degree view just like the vehicle. Tesla is also highly leveraging other elements of the car. They already know how to do cooling and battery power management, as well as streamline manufacturing. Not that Tesla seems to have too many competitors here, but this is very much reminiscent of the original iPhone, where Apple put Mac OS X on the phone, which already had all of the functionality, including battery and power management that they needed for the phone, but from their Mac computer. And it basically helped bring them instantly half a decade ahead of their competition. One of the closest and most well-known competitors in this space is Boston Dynamics. I wouldn't even consider them a competitor really, since the market is completely untapped. But actually, Elon Musk already employs some of the services of Boston Dynamics. They use the Spot Robot Dog at SpaceX to safely investigate wreckages from the rockets before sending humans in. Tesla will easily be able to replace the use of Boston Dynamics at SpaceX with a functioning Tesla bot in the future. Boston Dynamics was founded 30 years ago, in 1992, as a spin-off from MIT, and in 2013 it was acquired by Google. At this point in time, they had a lineup of robots, including Big Dog that can handle ice and snow, Cheetah, a robot that could run at 29 miles per hour, and Petman, their first humanoid robot that was initially used for testing chemical protection suits. The robot was also capable of a brisk walk, as well as other human-like motions. Boston Dynamics based their more current Atlas robot after Petman. Atlas originally weighed 330 pounds and was 6 foot 2, and had an off-board power supply and control unit. In 2015, DARPA pushed Boston Dynamics to build an onboard power supply with wireless communications. And since then, Atlas has now become much more refined, capable of more complex behaviors, including whole body athletics and maintaining balance through rapidly changing activities. During this time, Boston Dynamics has also changed owners multiple times, being bought by SoftBank in 2017 for $165 million and later being purchased by Hyundai 
in 2020 for $1.1 billion. In effect, the robotics company is now owned by a car company similar to Tesla's situation. Boston Dynamics has had at least 10 years of experience developing humanoid robots. While they are extremely impressive and have very human-like movements, the company seems to be moving relatively slow in terms of improvements. The commercial aspect hasn't really exploded, and although the last known $1.1 billion valuation was a very nice 7x return for SoftBank, it's still a comparatively small company. The original use case was to assist humans in responding to future natural and man-made disasters, but has evolved into enriching people's lives. On the other hand, Elon Musk is talking about TeslaBot redefining what an economy really means. The vision seems much grander, and in order to get there, Tesla's focus is on what they do best, which is scaling. And they do do it best. So far, Tesla has been the fastest scaling car company in history, even outpacing Ford in the early 1900s. The robots will be much easier to scale than cars, as they are smaller and the bottleneck for cars is the battery, for which the robot uses just a fraction of what goes into a car. Tesla is, in many cases, still far behind where Boston Dynamics' Atlas robot is today, but they're moving extremely fast, leveraging the electric vehicle and energy sides of the business. The latest production version of Optimus is 5'8 and weighs 160 pounds. Atlas, on the other hand, is 5 feet tall but weighs 195 pounds. Part of this weight differential could be attributed to the larger battery pack. Atlas stores 3.7 kilowatt hours of energy and Tesla's Optimus is just 2.3 kilowatt hours. What really matters is efficiency and making sure the robot can go a long way and be as useful as possible on a single charge. Optimus sitting down uses just 100 watts of power according to Tesla, so it can go about 23 hours on idle, and it uses 500 watts of power for a brisk walk which should last a bit over 4.5 hours. Now we don't have all of the exact data for Tesla and Boston Dynamics, but the Atlas robot can do about one hour of mixed use motion, which is probably a lot more intense than a brisk walk. But keep in mind that Tesla has a smaller battery pack, which reduces weight. Tesla makes some of the most efficient batteries in the world, especially if they plan on using 4680 cells in Optimus, which seems to make a lot of sense, since Tesla can manufacture about 32 Optimus battery packs equivalent to the same energy as a single Model Y battery pack. And also by the time Tesla bot hits high volume, Tesla should be pumping out 4680 battery cells like crazy. Atlas is said to have a custom battery pack and it uses compact hydraulics, which has advantages and disadvantages. The hydraulic system is likely more centralized with hydraulic fluid being pumped to the endpoints where it's needed. Though the bot carries around hydraulic fluid likely adding more weight and volume than Tesla's electric approach. But it almost seems like Tesla's hardware on the Optimus production unit is already pretty close, better in some areas, worse in others, than Boston Dynamics' Atlas. Atlas, for instance, can fall and be kicked around, and the outer shell is very robust. Tesla is not there yet in robustness, since they said they were afraid to damage the components if the robot fell. But Tesla can leverage their car crash expertise to better protect Optimus, and it seems like they're already doing that. Atlas also uses 3D printed components to reduce weight and increase strength, but depending on the scale, 3D printed components usually target less volume production. Elon Musk is envisioning thousands of robots for its own factories, not to mention selling the robots to consumers, ultimately millions of units, he says. He's estimated $20,000 for the price of the Tesla bot, and my guess is that even at that price, this will have very high margins. Elon Musk talked about a $25,000 Tesla car, which is much larger, uses way more materials, and a much larger battery pack. Tesla bot will eventually be easier to manufacture as it should be, and this scale will put them ahead of any competition. If Tesla can indeed make 32 Optimus battery packs for just one Model Y equivalent, that's $640,000 in sales compared to a $60,000 Model Y. Tesla bot can be extremely lucrative and frankly seems underpriced at $20,000 if they can replace specific human jobs. Tesla is no doubt not where Boston Dynamics is at today, 
but they have the potential to move significantly faster. Most of the functionality of the robot is based on software. That's actually the real differentiator between Atlas and Optimus, since it looks like Tesla's hardware is about to catch up pretty quickly. For software, Tesla is using the same approach with cameras only as it does with the full self-driving vehicle architecture. Tesla has insane back-end data center capabilities and impressive neural net models that they're adapting from driving to a more general type of vision that robots can use. It's very much the same problem that the vehicle industry faces against Tesla. Tesla has more data, more compute power, better tools, and better AI, and they all just entered the humanoid robot world. As a matter of fact, Boston Dynamics' Atlas robot literally has a LiDAR for a head. This is another expensive piece of hardware, and Tesla has already solved this issue with neural nets capable of extremely good depth perception. So it's almost not fair to say that Tesla has just started in robots since they've been working for years on AI and have the potential to quickly surpass Boston Dynamics in terms of vision and functionality. Right now, Tesla is in the process of building a strong base of tools and software, but their robot features will accelerate and they already seem to be doing that as it's taking just weeks to teach the robot to walk, for instance. While Boston Dynamics uses neural nets, the Atlas robot behavior is largely programmed. Tesla's approach is closer to autonomous cars, where you tell the car where to go and it goes there. In the same fashion, the goal is to tell the robot what to do and it does it. This is quite different from what Boston Dynamics has demonstrated so far. Their robots can do backflips and such, but don't really understand the world around them. As Elon hauntingly says, the LiDAR is a crutch, and so Atlas sees the world around it through LiDAR, and Optimus will use occupancy networks and other AI techniques just like FSD inside the Tesla vehicles, and I have a video explaining this in more detail here. There was also a question during AI Day 2022 on the vehicle intervention equivalent but for Optimus, and Elon Musk mentioned that it will be remotely operated so it can be stopped if it's about to do something bad. They also have built-in security features for safety too, but it seems like mostly they will rely on simulations to collect data. It would be pretty interesting if eventually it took real-time human input, such as a human talking to it for instance, to teach it something. And that would be pretty insane and also a way of sort of supervising its learning at a larger scale to speed up its learning significantly. One more thing that Tesla has decided to do is to give the robot a human form, and in that case it has human-like hands, four fingers, opposable thumbs, and as we know from, since we're human, real hands are quite useful for a wide variety of tasks. Except they will be challenging to master, but it will focus Tesla's efforts on one thing. This is another advantage that Optimus has over other robots like Atlas, which have non-human hands, and sometimes various different types of hands as the creators can't seem to decide which are better or rather easier to get working. Tesla showed simulations of Optimus picking up a watering can to water the plants, and so if they can solve the use of hands at a higher level, like picking up any shape or sized object, that unlocks many use cases. Tesla has big plans for Optimus, but realistically, it will first show up in the factory and stay there for 3-5 to five years before Tesla brings this product to consumers. Nevertheless, at that time in 5 years, or even in 10 years, it may be unimaginable how far Tesla will have gotten, especially starting on this project today and moving at the speed that they do. If all goes according to plan, and Tesla builds a humanoid robot with some real capabilities, they will be unstoppable in terms of building and automating anything they want. So what do you think are the most important things that Tesla needs to work on first to improve the viability of the Optimus robot? And where do you see the Tesla bot's capabilities being in five years from now? If you enjoyed this video, have a look at my last video on Tesla's occupancy networks and subscribe to stay tuned for more upcoming Tesla videos. Please hit the like button, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.